Today, there's a World War II warship cruising up the Ohio River all the way to Pittsburgh, and they're gonna be passing my area around 1 or 2 p.m. today. And it's called the USS LST-325. It's the last fully operational landing ship tank in the country. It is extremely rare to see something like that cruising down the Ohio River. We're gonna cruise out and try to go find this thing right as it's going by. Maybe cook some food, get some cool drone shots, and see the size comparison, because the thing is 328 feet long with a 50-foot beam compared to my 31-foot with a 10-foot beam. First things first, off to the grocery store. Most of the stuff that I already needed on my boat, but got the rest here. And I'm gonna make some delicious wraps. Pretty much all I ever eat is wraps. Breakfast wraps, lunch wraps, dinner wraps. When I go to restaurants, that's all I get is wraps. I don't know why I love them so much, but they're my favorite. Back to the boat we go. Supposed to be like 95 degrees today. It already feels definitely like 90. Very humid and disgusting, but I can't complain because it's not freezing cold. I'd much rather be hot than cold. Let's get all this stuff put away and then relax for a minute after the gym, hop on the computer for a bit, and then take the boat out and find this gigantic ship. Just got an update that the boat is literally like here. So I gotta get going really quick. AC, shut off. It wasn't supposed to be here until two o'clock, 2.30, and it's only like 10.30 right now. This way, oops. Archer I've ever had. It 
take so long to get out this freaking No Wake River, the Beaver River, but I'm really hoping that uh, I didn't miss it already because someone just messaged me on Facebook and said, oh, it's in blah, blah, blah town. A picture of the warship was posted like 37 minutes ago at a town like right here. So I'm like 37, at this point, I'm probably like 45 minutes late to it being like right here. Depending on how fast it's moving, we'll see. I think it moves at like 11 knots. So we'll see. Okay, a little boat just went by and told me I just missed the warship, but um, it, if I get on plane and start cruising, I should be able to catch up to them because there's no way they're cruising at the speeds that my boat can go. Man, I'm mad. They literally said it was gonna be here around 2 to 2.30 p.m. and it is 10.30 a.m. Stupid. now can see it. I had to go a lot farther than I thought and I have barely any fuel in the boat. My plan was literally to go out right to the Ohio River where the Beaver River meets it by my marina and catch it as it's coming by and now I'm chasing this thing all the way down the Ohio a lot farther than I wanted to. I was about to just give up. I kept making turns around the river and couldn't see it, couldn't see it. Now I just finally got a glimpse of it and it, this thing must be moving fast because that picture was posted of it way, way down river the other way, 30 some minutes ago, and now it's all the way up here. Really, really hoping I don't run out of fuel. So this thing was originally launched in 1942 out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's named the LST-325, and it's the last fully operational landing ship tank, which is what LST stands for, in the country. It's 328 feet long, 50 feet wide, and powered by two 900 horsepower diesel engines. It played major roles in several World War II operations, including the invasion of Sicily and D-Day at Omaha Beach. It transported troops, vehicles, and even rescued 700 men from a torpedoed ship. It was also hit by German bombers and even survived a major storm that ended up cracking its hull. After World War II, it was decommissioned and reactivated for Arctic operations during the 50s and then served with the Greek Navy all the way up until 2000. It's been redesignated as a historic museum and is now docked in Evansville, Indiana, taking a one month tour at the end of each summer to visit other cities. Well, we definitely failed the mission of cooking next to this thing. <laughs> Seeing how fast it's going, I'm realizing that was impossible unless I had someone else to drive while I cooked. Man, I am sweating. That was stressful. Like, full speed, stop, grab, run downstairs, grab the drone, fly the drone, rip it around, then the boat passes. Got a battery's about to die on the drone, gotta land the drone, swap the battery, new battery in, take it back off, fly it down, do laps around the, around the battleship. <laughs> Stressful, but that thing's actually moving quite quick. I don't have the fuel to be chasing it anymore I'm gonna start heading a little bit back towards where uh, my marina is and I'm gonna drop anchor somewhere and then we're gonna cook. I wanted to cook and eat with that thing in the background But it's just not possible Sometimes you just Sometimes you can't get everything you want. I'm super happy that I made it out to see it. That's one of the greatest things about this boat even though it's horrific on gas the fact that it can still go 44 miles an hour, being 13,000 pounds, a little bit under 13,000 pounds, but the fact that it's this big of a boat that I can live on and it can still go fast, saves me in situations like that, where I wanted to see a really cool World War, World War II ship, and if I had a big houseboat or a trawler, I would have never been able to catch up to. Hey, old girl's doing a good job. All right, I'm starving now, it's time to go eat. All right, we're pretty close to the Beaver River where I dock, so let's go ahead and drop the anchor. It's one of my favorite features on this boat. All right. 
right. Normally I would never shut the motors off until I know for sure the anchor's caught, but it is so calm out here that I'm really not worried about it. There's barely any current, barely any wind. It's pretty freaking nice. Let's get some ventilation in here. Oh yeah. All right, what first, what first? Get a pre-cooking appetizer. Peppers, cheese, jalapeno, maybe some mushroom, and onion. Oh, we got the bonus pepper inside. Turn the water after all the chaos. I'm chasing the warship. generator on. Oh, let me turn the water off. I have to switch these down, slide them over. There we go. Now everything's powered off the generator. I don't use regular olive oil and stuff. I use this stuff. It's uh, extra virgin olive oil and avocado oil, and it's zero calories. Toss some of that in there. Now we're gonna chop up a jalapeno. All right, that is entirely too many peppers and onions for the amount that I'm gonna eat, but I'll have to just save it for later. Go into the back fridge. And I believe I have some tomatoes left over from when my buddy Ryan Toomey was here. If you guys saw those videos. Oh, I actually had breakfast sausage. Didn't even know that. What is this? Oh, queso fresco. Heck yeah. Avocado. for now bust out the ground turkey I'm trying to be healthy to do like maybe I was gonna put mushrooms in here but changed my mind not feeling them today. Nah. Jesus. Oh, it's from a little barge. All right, now we're gonna take the peppers and onions, mix them in with the meat. Not all of them probably, because it's probably too much. We'll see what that looks like. Ah, 
we could do more. Now we grab. Tortillas. These tortillas are not really like normal tortillas you'd make burritos out of. So a lot of times I don't really heat these up because they don't need them. They're like super soft and I don't know, like them that way. Some cheese up in there. I know I said I was trying to be healthy, but I put cheese in one of these last time I cooked and it was incredible. Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. Oh, I'm so excited to eat this. So let's take, honestly, this is way too much food, but I'm gonna take a little bit there. Take some avocados up in there. Some tomatoes. I'm gonna put it on there for a sec just to kind of help seal the burrito. And these are very mini burritos just because these are my favorite wraps that I like to use. Those huge ones, I just don't like them. They're like 300 freaking calories for one tortilla. These ones, 60, and I think they taste way better. All right. Trainer, generator's turned off. Let's get this puppy out here. Oof. This looks freaking incredible. Normally I'm a really big sauce guy, but I don't think this is honestly even gonna need any sauce. So without further ado, bone apple teeth. Hmm. Oh. I just bought this at the store, so I'm gonna try it. It's Melinda's fire roasted jalapeno. Mm. Not a big fan. Let's do a little bit of truff sauce. Mm-hmm. That was the move. Melinda's black truff sauce. Mm. Now, I like the way approximately zero seconds after eating before I go swimming. I literally had to stop cleaning because the boat started rocking so freaking much that the door was starting to shut and I ran out and it was this huge boat that went by really close. It was crazy in here. I like was starting to get sick. Blowers, ignition. Let the blowers go for a little bit. Get all the fumes out of the engine compartment. There's actually a guy that lives right past this bridge. And a few weeks ago, he was cruising in his boat and one of his motors died out. The fuel line ruptured and started spitting fuel all through the engine compartment. So when he tried to restart that motor that died, it ignited and just exploded. The whole engine compartment exploded. The hatch flew off. Someone told me that it hit the bridge 
I believe it, it's only 60 feet up, but the guy got blown up onto his dashboard of his boat, burns all the way down his leg. Luckily, nobody was sitting back here because they probably would have died. So now I take it very seriously whenever I'm leaving these blowers on. Engine number one. Engine number two. Safety chain on. And the blower's off. It's a little bit windy right now, so we'll see how docking goes. It's always a mystery if it's gonna go well or not. Don't do it. I gotta readjust that one. But we're in here. Turn the ignitions off, turn the water off, switch all the main power over to shore power, and then turn that AC on. All right, I'm ready for this thing to cool down. Well, I just killed a few hours editing and took a little nap because last night I got barely any sleep. I'm gonna take the e-bike out for a little rip right before it gets dark. Just to kind of relax, even though it's not really relaxing, but to me kind of it is. I don't know. See, boats like this have to pay every single time to use these big lifts. So if you have any sort of issue with your boat and you need to pull it out, gotta pay money every time and schedule it and all that. Whereas like if I got my trailer, I'll just pull it out. Also, this spot across the street, it's called Jerry's Curb Service. It's been around forever, but it's just like a cool little old school diner where you just pull up, take your order, bring your food out, and then you eat inside your car. One of my favorite places right here. Not a bad sunset, not a bad spot with the bike. This is where the Beaver River that I'm docked on meets with the Ohio. Jumped off this bridge many times. 
haven't jumped off this one yet. Let's see. Well, I think I'm gonna end the video here. If you watched all the way to the end, I really, really appreciate it. And also drop a comment and just let me know what you think about the videos in general. If you're enjoying the boat content, what you thought about this video specifically, was it too boring? Was it not exciting enough? Was it just perfect? Was it too long, too short? Because I'm trying to get as much information from you guys as I can to make sure that these videos are perfect. And I will catch you guys for the next one. Let's keep the boat life going. Peace, guys.